Hey, good morning, and welcome to worship for this 16th day of June, 2024. This is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Thanks for joining us here at St. Stephen Lutheran Church of Stowe, Ohio. We're going to enter into our time together this morning with a blessing for fathers, because not only is it the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, it's Father's Day. Gracious God, pour out your Spirit on all fathers. Grant to them keen insight into their children's needs. Help them to be faithful examples of truth and of love. Soften their hearts so that they might hear their children's cries and strengthen their resolve. Help them to be men of commitment and faith. In times of sorrow and times of disappointment, let them know that you are by their side and you care for them. In times of doubt and confusion, show them the way. In times of happiness and times of joy, let them see your face in all that is good and right and true. And in all times, sustain these fathers with the knowledge that they too are children, your children. We ask that you bless and keep them, in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. You and I are drawn together to Christ this morning, and we're here because we are seeking God's abundance. Let us enter into the call of the Holy Spirit by confessing our sins. God, our provider, we ask that you would help us. It's hard to believe that there is enough to share. We often question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We often turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We tend to take offense at your teaching and at your ways, and so we ask that you would turn us again to you. Where else could we ever turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved child of God, in Christ Jesus, the man of your mother, you are fed and you are nourished. By Christ Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Christ Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and you are loved into the abundant life of God, together with the Holy Spirit and Christ Jesus. Amen. There is a war in Gaza. The Kelsey brothers have opened an Ohio beer company. Hunter Biden was convicted. Jim Donovan retired from WKYC. There are 756,000 people in Sudan that face starvation. Jerry West, whose outline is the NBA logo, dies. Amazon continues to deal with and try to barter with and make deals with unions and union workers. There is a heat wave in the Western United States. 
There's flooding in Florida. This has been a week of the NBA Finals. There was a cyber incident at Cleveland City Hall. Cleveland City Hall reopens. Cyber threat recloses City Hall after its reopening. There's been a big weather swing. The G7 committed together to giving $50 billion in support of the Ukraine. Bridgerton is to its mid-season premiere. Stowe Monroe Falls School District continues to hold meetings and work through its superintendent and hiring process. Juneteenth is coming up. There was a fan tased on the field in Cincinnati in the middle of a Guardians Reds game. It's Pride Month. The movie Bratz, about the Brat Pack from the 1980s, has premiered. Inflation flatlined. It's still high, but it's not higher. And also, we draw near to the memory, to the date in which we remember the Emmanuel 9, which is June 17th. Do you know what these are? These are headlines from this past week. Did I miss any of them? I mean, there's no way I could include them all, right? Uh, so are there any that you would like to add? In theory, if you run down through the headlines, whether you want to add some or whatever, if you have this list, in theory, you would have a feel for the week that was and the world that we live in. And this is, on the one hand, let's call it the left. This is the situation, the world, on the one hand, on the left. I'd also like to uh, read this for you. It's the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day. And the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's call this the words on the right hand. This reading from the fourth chapter of Mark is, of course, the text for today. It's the gospel that we gather around. And so the headlines tell us about uh, the world we live in, the week that was, and you might want to add to them or, or uh, change them or do whatever you want to edit that, but that's a partial list of headlines. And then I read for you the Gospel according to St. Mark, and we'll say those are the words here on the right hand. How does that make you feel? What do you think these parables that Jesus speaks are about? What is Jesus saying in the fourth chapter of Mark? To me, this is about you and I and the reality of our lives. You and I live in not one, but two 
kingdoms. We live in the kingdom on the left, that's what I'll call it, uh, the one with the headlines and the world that we live in, and we lived on the kingdom on the right, the one with uh, our faith and the stories of the gospel and church, and these are the two kingdoms that we live in. On the left, we have all these headlines, things about wars and premieres of things, and uh, labor issues and financial issues and weather things. And in the kingdom on the left, uh, which is certainly one that we live in, we think about how policing or disciplining uh, is necessary. If you were watching uh, the Guardians game against the, the Reds earlier this week, you know that when the fan went on the field, he did a backflip in front of the police. He was in a place that he was not allowed in. He tried running away, and they tased him right on the field, uh, which is a matter of policing, and this is one of the kingdoms that we live in. Still, Monroe Falls has decisions to make about how to educate, and we live in this kingdom, and this is a place where you and I, as people of God, attempts to function. Then next to it is this other kingdom. The other kingdom is the kingdom where we gather in church, or we sit with people, we're prayerful people, we hear who we are as Lutherans and who God makes us, that we are baptized children of God, and that we gather around a meal together, and that God's word is a word that puts us to death, but promises to help us raise again. And it's about being uh, um, forgiven for our sins in Christ Jesus, and that forgiveness of sins opens a certain perspective or calls us into a certain way to live. And these are the two kingdoms, and you and I live in them at once. Although you and I are gathered together right now, and we're thinking pretty particularly about uh, the kingdom here on the right, our faith, because that's what we do when we gather for worship, we also live in that kingdom on the left. Uh, things about where we live and our neighborhoods and the whole world around us and the rules and the process and the function and all of that. You and I live in two kingdoms at once. This is a pretty uh, foundational uh, way that Luther teaches and explains the world around us. But the important part of that is, is that those kingdoms are the left hand and the right hand of God and of God's creation. What I mean to say is, is that even though the kingdoms are being separated out in order to talk about them, uh, separating them out is not uh, removing either of them from God and from who God is. How do the headlines make you feel? How do we react to this? How do you th feel about this gospel and what do they, those words say to us? I'm a dad, and as a dad I look at things like uh, the rules at school, or I look at uh, the process by which we uh, live and, and I talk to my wife, or, or I think about who I am and the neighborhoods that I live in, or I talk to my kids, and so many of that discussion is about uh, critical thinking. It's about behaving well for others. It's about planning and uh, conserving and thinking and accounting for your actions. And I always, always talk about this. And this has to do with how we live in God's kingdom on the left. And this is certainly part of who we are. But did you hear the words of that gospel? The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise, and the seed would sprout and grow. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds, uh, but becomes the greatest of all shrubs. And this is God's word on the right. And the truth of it is, is that most of what we think about or interact with is this uh, kingdom on the left, the way that we're going to live amongst other people in God's creation. And I know that we set out time to be faithful people, but it can be sometimes hard to see how these two things mix. To me, the idea of the two kingdoms is, is that we certainly live in a world with war and hiring and paychecks and uh, policing and weather and 
and maintenance of, of communities and all this stuff that goes on around us. And we certainly hear God's word to us and who God makes us. But the two kingdoms work like this, that we never vote or earn or pay or uh, commune or, or, or do things with other people without remembering that we're faithful. And we never think of ourselves as faithful without thinking how that might affect uh, the kingdom on the left. Both of the hands are God's kingdom. And so we think about how both of these things intersect. And in a world of headlines, most of which are problems so huge that I don't know what to do with them, we get this morning's gospel. The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. With what can we compare the kingdom of God? It's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it is sown it grows and becomes the greatest of all shrubs. This morning as we sit and uh, for a few minutes maybe lean a little bit more into uh, our existence on the kingdom of the, the right hand and hear uh, who God is, uh, it's important that we hear this uh, as God's sort of joke or, or, or God's sense of humor. It's important that we hear that God is saying that God's word and God's presence uh, is sure to bloom and grow, and God likens it in these parables to an invasive weed that you just can't get rid of. And what we're hearing about here is, is that God scatters this seed, even in a world with headlines that are all over the place. I mean, I could have gone on and on about them, right? And so what we're gathered here to think about is what it would look like for God to be at work in these kingdoms today. What it would look like for us as people of faith who gather uh, and focus of, on this kingdom on the right of what God's word is, to remember that what God's word is, is never removed from both the kingdoms at once. It's simultaneous. And the other kingdom is this kingdom of the headlines and these parables of seeds of an invasive weed uh, that's being sown and that God promises to have sort of consume and take over is a story of hope in the face of headlines. Some of these headlines can get us worked up. Some of these headlines can remind us of uh, scary things. Some of these headlines might make us uh, indifferent or might wonder the kinds of things they're putting on TV nowadays or whatever we feel about these. But the question is, uh, what is the promise of this morning's gospel in a world of headlines that make us feel like they do? This morning I would like for you to think about it. I would like for you to think about this to the point where maybe you even write this down for yourself. Maybe you need to get out uh, a pen or a piece of paper. Maybe you take notes on, on your device or something. But, uh, but this is something for you to write down so we can keep in front of us. I'll do it here, and you can do it wherever uh, this finds you this morning. Uh, but, but let's think about this. What is a gift that God has given you? What's a skill or a thing that you have and that you know comes to you from God? Maybe you're not sure. Maybe you're like, well, I don't do a whole lot. All I have is a lot of free time. But that in and of itself is a gift. And maybe you can use something like extra free time to pray for the world or for people around us. Now think about this one. Uh, what's something that you have? What's a resource that you've been given by God? Maybe it's a home. Maybe it's a, uh, a car. Maybe it's a chance to go on vacation, whatever. And maybe something as small as a car can be a seed that's used in our world where you do something as small as uh, run an errand for somebody. And so these are the questions that I want you to sort of write the answer down to. Uh, what's a gift that God has given you? What's something that you have? Right? Write down those things. And then consider 
what God could possibly be calling you into with those things. This is how we live in the kingdom on the right and the kingdom of the left. We live in them simultaneously. And the reason why we sit and hear uh, things like the parables from the fourth chapter of Mark is because these uh, ask us to remember who God makes us. And that who God makes us are people who live in both of these kingdoms and we still live in the world. And that these things, gifts that God gives us, things that we have, become callings that we can actually participate in. I mean, I'm not sure what you're going to do about uh, Cleveland City Hall facing a cyber incident. About Cleveland City Hall opening back up and then the cyber incident not having been cleaned up and then closing back. But maybe you have some sort of device. Maybe you're watching this on your phone. And instead of maybe always knowing how to fix uh, um, a cyber incident at Cleveland City Hall, maybe we consider uh, a text that we can send. How can I pray for you today? It's been a long time since I've been in touch with you, and I wanted to let you know I was thinking of you. Those sorts of things. Because we live in both of these kingdoms at once, we are the ones who share hope in the midst of a world that feels kind of like uh, it's filled with trash and headlines. And the idea of this morning's gospel is that God's word and God's present is an invasive kind of a joke, uh, a seed, that God handles God's self. And so what you and I are thinking about is in a world of headlines, knowing that this is part of the world and part of how we have to live, but remembering that we're also people of faith and that we're both at once and who God calls us is part of uh, where we and how we live in the world. And so I'm thinking about um, something like uh, a flower uh, growing in the midst of trash. And I'm thinking of uh, a gift God gave you. Uh, I'm thinking about something that you have that I'm asking you to write down. And to be prayerful about how that can be a call to live into a world with all these headlines. It's uh, a small thing, and it might feel something like a, a tiny flower in the midst of a lot of junk. But this morning's gospel asks us to believe that God is a God of both kingdoms and that God continues to be at work and that God continues to be at work through you and that where uh, these headlines are so huge you are who you are and God has placed you where God has placed you and God has claimed you as a baptized child of God and uh, so all you can do is live you remember that uh, the seed uh, in the story is an invasive weed that God spreads and develops. And this is who we are, and this is how we live in both kingdoms at once. What's a gift God has given you? What's something that you have? What could God be calling you into in this? In a world of headlines, what joke, uh, what invasive weed of hope might God use through something as tiny as you and I. This is how we live in both kingdoms at once. This is how God's kingdom comes. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, you are the tree of life and you offer shelter to those gathered for worship this morning you offer shelter to moms and dads and kids you offer shelter to us all you offer shelter to the whole world we ask gracious god that you would graft us by your holy spirit into yourself we ask that you would nurture our growth that you would lead us into life in both kingdoms. 
a life where we live for you and know your joy. We ask all of this because we hope to bear your truth and your love to this world in need. And we ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Happy Father's Day. This is a day to remember our fathers and to spend with our family and with our kids. But never forget that we are gods and God is working through the kingdom on the right and the kingdom on the left, bringing these things together for good through us. Stay safe. I'll see you soon.